The Biostar X370 GTN, one of the first ITX Ryzen motherboards on the market. But how is it? I don't know, let's take a look. Hopefully this review will be short, sweet, and to the point. Let's start with a tour of the motherboard. At the top edge of the board, we've got our four pin CPU power header, and I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. Then we've got our four pin 5050 RGB LED header. This motherboard only has two four pin fan headers, and I strongly recommend that you use four pin fans with this motherboard. On the side of the board, you've got your standard ATX 24 pin power connector, the front IO connector. You've got two SATA 3 connections, a USB 3 connector, that's the old 30 pin style, CMOS jumper. Then here you've got one PCIe by 16 slot, of course, because it's an ITX motherboard. And you've got two more SATA ports for a total of four. Uh, there's also one extra USB 2.0 header for internal peripherals, or you could break that out into another expansion slot if you want. Now for the rear IO, we've got one PS2 port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, one DVI, one HDMI. Then we've got two USB 3.1 ports. This is USB 3.1 Gen 2, one Type A, one Type C. And then we've got a Realtek Ethernet port, which is the Realtek 8111AS. This is a special Realtek NIC. It is the smallest gigabit NIC that you can actually get, which is why they use that on this particular motherboard. It is physically the smallest gigabit chip that you can get. So. That's pretty neat. It does have 5.1 audio out with one SPDIF port. And on the back of the motherboard, you've got one M.2. So you can use M.2 with this motherboard. Although it might be a little problematic to get at, depending on you know what your case is. Now let's talk for a second about CPU power delivery. In the manual, it states 95 watt TDP. I was not brave enough to try an extreme overclock with this motherboard. I did install a Ryzen 7 1700, and the Ryzen 7 1700 could clock up to 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz, no problem, but I did not push the voltage. After about an hour, it was warm, but not alarmingly hot. Honestly, I've seen um, setups that actually had got hotter for some reason on B350 motherboards. So it is only a four pin power delivery system. It is ITX. I really would not push the overclocks with this motherboard very much at all because you're not really dumping that much power into the motherboard at first and it has a pretty modest power delivery system. That said, in testing, the Ryzen 7 1700 was pretty stable. Now the UEFI, the UEFI definitely leaves something to be desired. Um, as of this video, which is the end of June 2017, there's no Agiza 1006 update. So even with my Samsung BDI memory, I was not able to get past 2933 on this motherboard. And with a another G-Skill kit that was not, I think it was like Samsung eDI, I could not actually even get past 2600. The UEFI is kind of fiddly. In the overclock section, it's really just offset voltages that you have, and they're color-coded, you know, regular yellow and red, to give you some kind of an indication as to, you know, how extreme of an overclock it is. But things are really not super clearly labeled, and it's not really clear if you're doing an overclock or if you're doing an overvoltage, you know, during turbo cycles or all the time, or if it's a permanent offset. So it's really not super clear exactly what kind of an overclock that you were getting. Similar thing with the memory timing, like, you know, setting some memory parameters, you could set the memory parameters, but the, the UEFI was really not super clear. There's not really a lot of options in the UEFI. So I feel like Biostar's got a little bit more work to do there. There is fan control in the UEFI, but honestly, it's not very good. You will need to use four pin fans with this motherboard, no matter what. I, three pin fans, I think, are pretty much right out. So, at least in my experience, it seemed like it was trying to control the 3-pin fan. Maybe that was just something they planned on but didn't execute correctly. I'm not really sure, but you're going to want to use a 4-pin fan with this motherboard. In the box, you've got four SATA cables, an I.O. shield, a DVD driver, and a quick installation guide. Now, because it has 50-50 LED headers, it does come with control software that's called Vivid LED DJ. So, you, you can control your RGB LED strips and, and that sort of thing. And it just wouldn't be level one if I didn't actually test this with Linux. So, booting it up with Linux everything worked. This is Fedora 26 that I'm using, so it booted right up, all the peripherals were detected. Everything, you know, the audio seemed to work, at least I was getting beeps out of the audio. The LAN port worked, USB ports seemed to work. Um, so I think that is a reasonably satisfactory experience. I did not list the IOMMU groups because, hey, there's not really a lot of PCI Express connectivity here, so yeah, IOMMU, and we don't have a Giza 1006 anyway, so we'd have to wait on that. Um, so Linux does work and you know, there are other alternatives for ITX on Ryzen, but this has got the first mover advantage. This is the first board on the market or one of the first Ryzen ITX boards on the market. 
And you know, uh, at the time of this video, it's around $100 a new egg, $110, something like that. It's not a bad value. It's an X370 chipset. I mean, you're not going to be using two GPUs with it, obviously, no SLI. But it is a competent motherboard for what it is, especially at the price point. So I think if you're not going for an extreme overclock, um, this motherboard would be fine. I would recommend it more for Ryzen 5 than Ryzen 7. But all in all, it's a competent motherboard. I would like to see them improve the UEFI. The problems that I have with this motherboard are mainly around software. It would have been nice to see an 8-pin power delivery system for the CPU, but I get why they went with a 4-pin power delivery system. But overall, you know, it's a competent board. If you picked up one of these, or you're thinking about picking up one of these, or you have an opinion to share on this motherboard, come to the forum at level1text.com. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.